New York City is known for a lot of magnificent things. But it's also known for its endless heaps of trash. You need us to clean your community. Without us, things won't be too pretty. Over 14 million tons of trash per year is created by the city's residents and businesses. We take what nobody wants and turns it to what everybody needs. Garbage collection in New York City is unlike any other system in the world. It's a magnificent symphony of city workers and private companies with a history of epidemics, mob ties, strikes, and environmental controversy. This is how New York City hauls away its trash. In 2019, sanitation work was the fifth most dangerous job in the U.S. Most accidents occur during transportation incidents. All the times that I've gotten hurt on this job with stitches, people throw steak knives in bags, scissors in bags, needles is a big one also. Don't stand behind this when it's going up. Bags explode, everything comes out. You don't want to get hit with that. You need us to clean your community. Without us, things won't be too pretty. Shift is at 6. We'll have roll call. Stay alert. Know where your partner is, wear your high-vis vests. Do not take compressed tanks. Then they'll go and they'll check their truck. Then they get in the truck, and off they go to their route. The New York City Department of Sanitation is the largest municipal waste operation in the country with over 7,000 uniformed sanitation workers and a $1.7 billion annual operating budget. The department has over 2,100 trucks that collect, on average, 12,000 tons of trash and recycling each day. When it snows, the department is also responsible for clearing the more than 6,300 miles of streets. It's a massive and sprawling system that has taken over three centuries to build. When Dutch settlers first founded the small town that would become New York back in the early 1600s, residents simply dumped their trash into the closest waterways, like a place called Collect Pond in Lower Manhattan. But as more people arrived on Manhattan's shores, the garbage began to pile up. The next 200 years, the city continued to grow and neglect any cohesive management of its refuse. Subsequent outbreaks of malaria, smallpox, whooping cough, measles, typhoid, cholera, and yellow fever killed thousands. By the 1840s, sailors claimed that they could smell the city six miles from the shore. New York was now one of the dirtiest cities in the world with a population that had grown to 500,000 people by 1850, 10 times more than what it had been in 1800. Finally, in 1881, New York established an official department of street cleaning. Today, service is cruising along on schedule. Once workers finish their routes, the trucks go to a transfer station to ship off the garbage outside the city since there are no landfills or incinerators left within its limits. So right now we're at the Hamilton Avenue Marine Transfer Station in Brooklyn. We have front-end loaders, that's what's down there, that are operated by sanitation workers, and they move the garbage around constantly, keep it moving, and put them into those different bays that you see that the trucks are dumping into. At the bottom of each bay is a container. That container gets compacted with the garbage by that tamper until we meet a maximum weight per container. After that process is done, sanitation workers will put a lid on that container, seal it, and then a conveyor takes it out onto the floor where it gets loaded on a barge. 
That barge will be shipped from here to New Jersey, where it's offloaded, put on rail cars, and then taken to another final destination. About a quarter goes to incinerators, and the rest is sent to landfills in central New York State, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and South Carolina. The department has a budget of $432 million just to export waste. Located just a 20-minute drive from Manhattan in the ironbound neighborhood of Newark, New Jersey, Covanta accepts waste from New York City and also from surrounding Essex County. As the trash is being combusted, we have tubes of water lining the boiler room. As the water gets heated, it proceeds up to the turbine, and that superheated steam spins the turbine, and then that's how we're generating that power. We're generating about 70 megawatts of power. We take what nobody wants and turns it to what everybody needs. So we monitor carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxide, opacity, and even our steam temperature. Uh, behind you is our turbine panel. I can see how much megawatts we're putting out to the grid. Our tipping floor attendant will tell them which bay to go to. The gate opens. They proceed to the bay. Uh, they push out their load. Then they button the truck up and they leave and go back to the scale house. Grapple can hold about between 10 and 12 tons of trash. Full capacity, uh, this pit stores probably about, about 14,000 tons. They do what we call fluffing the trash, where we, they pick it up, they'll drop it. Trying to aerate that waste and standardize that waste, you know, to make it uh, a better combustion um, process for us. According to the Institute for Local Self-Reliance, an advocacy group for sustainability, incinerators pose environmental human health risks to the marginalized communities that surround it. Incinerators are disproportionately located near low-income households, many of which include people of color. This incinerator is the burden of Newark's ironbound neighborhood, a place where the fight for environmental justice has inspired decades of protest that continue to this day. Because of this feedback, the city has made it a goal to reach zero waste as part of its one NYC plan. But on Staten Island, something else is happening. Residents there are finally witnessing the slow end of what was once the world's largest landfill. In fact, this peaceful grassy hill was built by garbage. When the landfill was open, every borough sent their garbage here. You could see Manhattan, you could see Jersey City. You come up here when the sun's coming up or going down, it's, it's, it's really beautiful. The Fresh Kills Landfill was opened in 1948 and accepted trash from all of New York City until it was closed in 2001. In the late 1970s, the landfill received about 28,000 tons of trash every day. The trash piled as high as 200 feet. In the end, about 150 million tons of garbage would be laid to rest at Fresh Kills. The last mound of trash is in the process of being capped or covered through elements of design meant to keep the garbage encapsulated for years to come. We've been capping this section three or four years. I think it's been. Once a part of the landfill is capped, there are hardly any visible remnants of its legacy. Pipes are the only thing that litter these hillsides nowadays, working to pump leachate, or water that has seeped through garbage to a plant for purification. The leachate needs to be purified so it can be safely released into New York's waterways. The clean water is dumped in the Arthur Kill, one of New York's waterways that doesn't have to suffer nearly the amount of pollution that it once did. We often take trash collection for granted. We're out there every day, we do what we do, you don't have to call us, it's regular. When do you miss us? 
if we're not out there. Yet it is this system, which was centuries in the making, that has allowed the city to remain the icon it is today. It's just something about New York. It's 24 hours, it's seven days a week. You get bit by the New York City bug, you're done. It's given more people the opportunity to call New York home, while sanitation workers cover the streets to cart away our tons of trash.